Hi, thank you for joining me today. I hope that uh, as you listen to some of the things that the Lord has shared with me today, that you'll be blessed and ministered to. So I was reading today in Philippians 3. Paul was writing to the church in Philippi and was addressing a few things. And so I'm just going to pick it up in verse 17. It says, Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters. And just as you have... Um, us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. You know, that first part, it's basically talking about where is your focus? What are you focusing on? And it's saying here, focus on my example. Keep your eyes on those who are doing what's right. Those who are um, who live as we do. So my first question that I ask myself is, where's my focus? What am I focused on? You know, there's so many things bombarding us on the TV and on the media and in the news of where we can put our focus. And Paul is saying here, listen, keep your focus on, you know, make the main thing the main thing, right? So again, where are you choosing to focus? We want to focus on God's word and we want to focus on and surround ourselves with those who are an example to us that are pushing us and encouraging us to keep going and to not give up. So then it goes on in verse uh, 18. It says, For as I have often told you and before, and now tell you again, even with tears. Oh, there's passion. You can see his passion and his heart in there. Many live as enemies of the cross. Their destiny is destruction and their God is their stomach. And their glory is in their shame. Their God is in their stomach. You know, I think about that and how many times are we thinking about the next thing that we want to do to satisfy our, you know, our flesh. I talked about our flesh on Sunday. If you didn't get the message, go listen to it on YouTube. Just talked about how we battle with our flesh. We want to satisfy our flesh, right? And, um, and so that's what it's saying here that um, their destruction, their God is their stomachs and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. Again, when we wake up in the morning, what's the first thing that you think about? When you go to bed at night and you lay your head on your pillow, what's the last thing that you think about? What is your mind set on? And again, we're pulled in so many different directions. And my challenge to myself, my challenge to you is, you know, it's not, it's not even in the ministry. It's in Jesus. It's in my relationship with him. It's in being a child of God right? It's not in your job. It's not in all the things that you pursue. It's being a child of God. That is the most important thing to set our mind on. So their minds were set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. It says we, and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies. Woohoo! I'm looking forward to a transformed body. How about you? Um, and then it says, so that we will be like his glorious body. Now, I'm actually very blessed because I have here, I have two passports. Um, I am a, right here you can see this is my Australian passport. I'm an Australian citizen and I'm also an American, is my American. I have two. So I can come and go in both countries and I can work in both countries. I don't have to get a visa to go, to go in and out. I get to go through the line of the citizens. And so, you know, I identify as an American and I also identify as an Australian. But Here's the thing, and I read this. It says, we are citizens of heaven. That passport, that one right there, listen, it doesn't matter what passport you have. If you're not a citizen of heaven, if you have not received Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's the one thing you want to get right, right? <laughs> and But the thing that is, is that, you know, we talk so much about I identify as this, I identify as that. I'm a white female American. I'm, you know, a white female Australian. No, you know what I am? I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. That's what I identify as. And so many times we are focusing so much more on the outward, whereas I want to focus on the inward. That's who I am. That's who 
God created me to be. And I'm a citizen of heaven. And I am patiently and excitedly awaiting until I get to have my homecoming with Jesus. And I hope that you are too. Um, and then it, just at the end, it says, I love this part too. It says, um, we eagerly await a savior uh, from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control. Listen, he, the Lord is in control. So right now, there's a lot going on on the news. There's, there's wars going on in Israel. You know, the pipeline thing has just happened. Now there's supposedly a gas shortage. There's just, you know, there's lines everywhere and this is going on and the pandemic and it just can feel like everything's out of control. It's not, it is not. I am so thankful that I serve a God who is completely in control at all times. He is, we don't need to worry. And so it says here that in verse 21, by the power that enables him to bring everything under control will transform our lowly bodies so that they may be like his glorious body. And, you know, to finish that up, we don't, and I talked about this on Sunday, we don't need to be looking at ourselves or others according to the flesh, right? We need to be looking according to the spirit and he is going to come back soon. I don't know when, nobody knows, but when he comes, I want to be ready. I want to be ready for him to return and to come back. And, you know, I was talking to the kids in the car the other day about just, you know, how I could be somewhere else. We could all be somewhere else, not serving the Lord, not knowing the love of Jesus, you know, not raised in a place where he is number one in our life, that we put him first. And I just, we just were so thankful that we have had the opportunity to be raised and to know and to choose Jesus over everything else. And, you know, we are talking about if you're going to get something right in your life, if you get nothing else right, get one thing right, that you have a relationship with Christ because you've got all of eternity to figure out what you, <laughs> what you made mistakes in. But having him as your number one, as the Lord and Savior of your life, that's the one thing that if you do everything else wrong, get that one right and you're going to be good. So let me pray for you. Lord, I just pray for each one here. Help us to um, realize what how we identify, Lord. We identify as children of God rather than all the external, all the other things, Lord, that are swirling around it doesn't matter, Lord. What matters is that we have citizenship in heaven because we know you, Lord. I just pray for anybody who is out there right now listening, who may be um, just in that stage of wondering whether or not they they really want to give themselves wholeheartedly to you. Lord, I pray that your spirit will just do a powerful work in them and compel them that the truth will be open, that their eyes will be open to know, Lord, that you are are everything lord you are the creator of this universe and so knowing you is is the best decision we can ever make lord we love you so much and we thank you and i just pray for each person that you will minister to them today that you will protect them today and be with them we love you in jesus name amen awesome well thanks for listening have a wonderful day bye bye